Uh, I'd like to thank Professor Jay Johan to kindly invite me here today. Um, I'd like to thank all of you guys who've uh, come over today on a very cold day. And please forgive me if my th throat uh, gives up at some point because I've got this bad cold, but it's not the Russian flu, I hope. <laughs> um, okay, um, what I'll do is, because there's quite a lot of uh, information, so I might read if you don't mind. Um, so I'm able to then um, kind of give you a, a proper kind of understanding of my work. I'm a senior research fellow at Manchester Metropolitan University uh, and I've been there for over five years. Uh, I'm also a practicing artist, uh, a writer and a cultural producer, as Jay said. Um, my research specialism is on curatorship with a particular focus on contemporary Asian art and international biennials. The path of my research is based on space, people, identity, transnationalism, post-colonialism and the journeys of South and North East Asian diaspora. This has a distinctive impact on curatorial and, uh, and, and cultural strands towards creating new knowledge and subsequent dissemination of high quality work especially in the context of rapidly changing economic and political demographics globally. In this presentation, I will give you two examples of my main research outputs. One is the Asia Triennial Manchester Festival, and the second is the Colombo Art Biennial, where I have served as principal investigator. I'm also curating a major exhibition by the renowned sculptor Anish Kapoor, later this summer in Norway, so um, everybody is welcome. <laughs> the early 1990s was a watershed period for the British cultural art scene. Several artists and curators from culturally diverse backgrounds started their independent journeys to find a platform to either present their artistic work or to find other means of presenting their work through curating exhibitions. My aim was to support the South Asian artistic sector and connect artists with international networks. <clears throat> During the same time, I began my journey as a curator at Huddersfield Art Gallery and then moved to Gallery Oldham, where I focused on presenting South Asian artists' work. In 2001, I founded Shisha, uh, which was a regularly funded organisation by the Arts Council of England. Uh, it was the International Agency for Contemporary South, South Asian Crafts and Visual Arts. Shisha was established in Manchester to program a broad range of projects and open creative and challenging perceptions in South Asian artistic, cultural and socio-political discourse. During 84 to 86, I was awarded the Commonwealth Scholarship. This is one of my art pieces, by the way. Uh, to study fine art at the Maharaja Saya Jirao University, Baroda in India. This was a very exciting and pinnacle time for me as a young practicing artist. I was privileged to have tutors like Professor Ghulam Muhammad Sheikh and the late Nasrin Muhammadi, who had an exhibition here at the Tate uh, a while ago, and, Bupin, and the late Bupan Kakar, who also had an exhibition at the Tate in, in, in London. Uh, they were very encouraging and supported my work. Approximately two decades later, and after founding Shisha uh, from 2001-11, my main objective was to support South Asian artists as I had had such an intense cultural and artistic knowledge given to me in India. I wanted to support the sector. In 2000, I collaborated with Professor Jay Chohan at the Centre for Art International Research, based at the university here. We set out <coughs> Our own network jointly inv invited several South Asian artists for the first time to the north of England, including Imran Qureshi, whose work I'll show you later on, Rekha Rodwitia from India, and Chandragupta Thenuwara from Sri Lanka. Our aim was to our aim was to uh, create a platform to intersect artistic ideas with practical workshops to benefit local students, but also to publicise this work in Britain. I've always been interested in building collaborative projects through lasting relationships with 
Oops, sorry. Um, lasting relationships with partner venues and artistic ne networks, both nationally and internationally. And this was a major aim of Shisha. During 2002, as part of the Commonwealth Games cultural program, I initiated Art South Asia. Art South Asia was a relatively new model for engaging with a wide range of local international curators, artists, audiences, which tried to avoid the traditional route of presenting art exhibitions solely in white cube gallery spaces. I was mainly interested in research which was firmly linked to international curators and artists based in South Asia and which would introduce new curatorial discourses. As director of Shisha for 10 years, I built a, a strong local and international network with artists, curators, policymakers, and funders and successfully delivered multiple projects, including the award-winning Asia Triennial Manchester, which I'll talk about later. The success of the inaugural Asia Triennial, or ATM08, was extraordinary. It resulted from a research project between former Professor John Hyatt, who was the director of Myriad at MMU, and myself. In 2007, we jointly provided the context for primary research exploring the lack of international Asian exhibitions in the context of Manchester's sizable Asian community and the growing economic and cultural boom in Asia. So this is the Russian project, the slide, which was, um, it was a trailblazing international artist residency project leading the way up to the first ATM. Rusham is a district in South Manchester, Manchester with a high percentage of Asian businesses, particularly restaurants, fam famously renowned as the Curry Mile, and a multitude of multicultural communities, including South Asian, Middle Eastern, African, Afro-Caribbean, people living in this cultural and vibrant geographical neighborhood. I commissioned two world-class artists, uh, namely Rashid Rana and Subodh Gupta. In 2006, Rashid Rana spent a period of time in residence at Manchester Metropolitan University. He researched and developed his work in partnership with the local job center plus building in Rusham. <coughs> Using his characteristic technique, Rana created a mosaic or fusion of pixelated abstracted images to represent and reflect the identity of the district. Rana's work is dominated by digital prints in which dozens of photos are arranged like tiles in a mosaic by spe um, specialized software to make up large images. These pixelated images were adhered to 28, win 28 windows of the Job Centre Plus building. Rana's work was placed on the busiest bus route in the city, estimated at 100 buses per hour, 62,000 bu bus passengers passing both locations in, which, uh, in each rush hour. You can, so you can imagine how, how busy Rusham is, or, or that Oxford Road corridor. In addition, car passengers and pedestrians passing by elevate the estimated weekday passing population to over a quarter of a million. <coughs> this is taken outside the Whitworth Art Gallery. In Subodh Skupta's sculpture, <coughs> entitled 27 Light Years, he used stainless steel Indian cooking utensils <coughs> My throat is going. Gupta's sculptures are said to evoke the sights and sounds and smells of an Indian kitchen. <coughs> Gupta's work was exhibited in the ground outside the Whitworth Art Gallery, a short walk from <coughs> the Job Centre Plus location. <coughs> Over 50,000 visitors came to <coughs> the Whitworth Gallery to see Subod's work. <coughs> Sorry. The aim of the ATM trail was to increase awareness of Asian visual arts and crafts and create a spectacular 
site-specific works that engage with the urban architectural vernacular, exploring themes of cultural and religious hybridity, pattern, fashion and food. The inaugural ATM was underpinned by the theme of protest. This gave scope to local and global and global significance while recalling Manchester's history of radical pro politics, its enthusiasm for new approaches to artistic practice and resonances with Asia. The programme knitted together a range of galleries across Manchester following a research agenda in which individual gallery curators researched and devised their own distinctive yet interrelated uh, contributions under a common theme. The theme chosen for the triennial of 2011 was um, time and generation. It was researched and devised by myself and uh, Leon Wainwright with the intention of including artists, curators, and audiences to explore what defines the contemporary moment in time, both within and beyond the context of uh, of the production or, or generation and the exhibition of art. The term served as a portmanteau beneath which the numerous artists, planners and curators for the triennial could assemble. It allowed them to bring together a range of concerns about the present historical moment, its migrations and changing global demography, its new politics of place, territory and community and to explore the significance of art in forming a public understanding of cultural production and generation, generational difference. <coughs> I'm just uh, going to show you some of the slides by, by the artist who <coughs> participated in, uh, in the ATM 08 and ATM 11. <coughs> I am so sorry about my, my voice. So this was um, uh, at the corner house and, and an artist, um, Sureka, with an inspirational uh, film, Between Fire and Sky. Adila Suleiman is uh, from Karachi, Pakistan. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> Enkbold, who's from Mongolia, originally wanted to sleep outside in Manchester and um, in his gur, and we, we suggested that that was not a, a good idea. <coughs> so in 2014, um, as part, um, I curated a complex exhibition at the Imperial War Museum North. I don't know how many people have uh, visited the Imperial War Museum North, but it's, um, <coughs> it's a really interesting uh, aluminium clad building, as you can see <coughs> on this, um, on this uh, slide. My curatorial journey presenting the work of a young, um, I curated the, 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 the ATM, um, although I'm talking specifically about some of the shows that I've curated, it's part of a much wider citywide program with uh, curators who curate individual showcases as well. And in um, 2014, there were 18 partner venues who um, worked with myself and artists uh, and, and we also had a symposium, so so um, it's it's um, you know it, it gives you that kind of um, wider network of, of galleries in, in in Greater Manchester as well. <coughs> My curatorial journey began presenting the work <coughs> of a young, innovative graffiti street artist based in Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, and 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 her name is Shamsia Hassani. Historically, women in Afghanistan have been subjugated under the rule of the Taliban. They're tortured and long for freedom. In Kabul Art Project interview in 2013, Hassani says, and I quote, 
Usually I'm painting women with burqas in modernist shape on walls. I want to talk about their life, to find some way to remove them from darkness, to open their mind, to bring some positive changes, trying to remove all bad memories of war from everybody's mind and covering sad city walls with happy colours. The darkness that Hassani talks about has been the fate of Afghanistan for more than a decade. Her graffiti drawings weave into the architecture, transforming it with intense and often stylized images of local women. So he uses her imagination to make new kind of graffiti. Uh, Samsia often paints, <coughs> this is her in this slide, um, she often paints um, symbolic shapes and fishes, symbols of the atmosphere flowing around her and her own life experiences. She's the first female graffiti artist and first 3D street artist of Afghanistan and uses her art to help bring positive changes to people and more specifically to wash away the depressing memories of long time war having taken place in her country. <coughs> As an Afghan girl confronting reactions motivated from traditional views, it's not always easy for Samsia to do graffiti the way other graffiti artists would do around the world. She would sometimes work her graffiti concepts out as drawings or paintings applied onto prints or pictures taken from different parts of Kabul, a category she calls dream graffiti. This is the <clears throat> the, the Russian cultural center um, in Kabul, which was, as you can see, bombed and all the bullets. You can see all the bullet holes. Uh, this is a newfound freedom for these women. Hassani's passion for street art and the spray can magically creates a, f a, a visual narrative on popular discourse, the very similitude of life itself. So the Imperial War Museum North is a, is a, is a, a very um, complex building, as I said earlier. And, and in the ent atrium entrance of the museum, also known as the massive tower called the Air Shard, immediately, <coughs> as part of the show, you, you were confronted by giant boxes entitled The Genie, made by Bashir Makul with hundreds of cardboard boxes crudely pierced by volunteers and the artist, puncturing uh, ordinary surfaces whilst leaving thin layers of skin that resembled black voids or bullet holes, almost similar to penetrating a human body, reminding us of an open wound of civilians caught up in war. <coughs> Jonathan Harris, in his book that I co-edited, Conflict and Compassion, describes that the anterior CGI video, which, which unfortunately I can't show you uh, today, representation of this work produced by McCool's colleague Ray Young, <coughs> accelerates the posterior material work into a virtual sphere that leaves behind any actual physical space once occupied by the material work that had been sighted in Manchester during the triennial in late 2014. The two versions of the work, the former extant, the latter abolished, are able thus to continue to share a kind of dialectical phenomenal symbiosis. Whatever the gen genesis of these versions of the work, in real time, these twin forms, the, the twin forms of it, the latter surviving only now in memory and photographs, <coughs> continue to form and feed off each other. The massive spaceships of science fiction films and novels slipping silently through the deep space with its epochal stellar time were usually representations of cities, human enclaves of one kind or another. These could be depictions of, for example, the last of humanity having left Earth for good, the new breed of space-born human of, of space-born human searching for planets to colonize, or the hybrid results of human and robotic entities that would never know Earth, and perhaps no, no Earth of any kind. But development are highly value-laden terms and metaphors wholly inappropriate to, to an account of the genealogy of the experimental work forms that McCool's 
box constructions have taken and they might have taken in future iterations. <coughs> the genie was carefully suspended from the Ayrshard's spectacular 55 meter concrete tower, intensifying the viewers, uh, the visitors' experience, just like the building which gives the impression it is leaning when it's in fact st straight, a technique used by the architect Daniel Lipskind. To disorient the visitor's experience, McCool created an ambient space, multiple boxes layered randomly and then displayed in clusters evoking a village, the material embodying the temporality, nature of settlements, dwellings and encampments, the life of the refugee of a Palestinian on the move, living in temporary accommodation, but perhaps permanently so. The boxes also reflected ordinary village life for the temporary nature of, of, of life lived on the move. Um, for me, the, the experience of the genie was beguiling. It brought a paradigmic a, a, a shift on the ground whilst the bird's eye view was awe-inspiring. On this occasion, the genie literally in, invaded the physicality of the whole building to enhance the stories within and, and gave the visitors a multi-sensory experience of war. <coughs> Nalini Milani, um, I think she had a show here as part of Alice in Wonderland exhibition at the Tate, uh, and recently she had a retrospective at the Pompidou Center in, in, in Paris. The critically acclaimed Indian artist Nalini Milani's site-specific installation was shown inside the museum at Silo 3, accompanied by unnerving sounds from the video in search of vanished blood. It transformed the space into an emotive experience for the viewer, dwelling on the threshold between visible and invisible, recent history and its shadows. Malini's work can be said to hold onto the mythological tradition at large by appropriating both Eastern and Western myths. She transformed her own social and historical experience into a visual idiom of a language that both, um, that both public and private uh, that were both public and private at the same time. The work, it was uh, a single channel version of Milani's large-scale large -scale multimedia video shadow play in search of vanished blood, in, which was uh, featured in Documenta 13. The latter work consists of six video channels with five rotating reverse painted Mylar cylinders the artist is widely considered the pioneer of experimental video art in India and one of the foremost artists working internationally in the field of intermedia and interdisciplinary practice. <coughs> one of the most important figures on the Pakistani art scene, Imran Qureshi, and, and it's interesting actually that when Imran was here, that was the first time that he came to England, and it was in Liverpool uh, as part of the care residency, and, 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 and how he has moved on. He's, he's, he's you know, he's um, um, artist of the year, he's won so many prizes, his work is in, in major collections, so on and so forth. Um, one of the most important figures on the Pakistani art scene, Imran Qureshi achieved global recognition as a leading figure of international contemporary art. Qureshi makes bold installations in mainly global cities and parks. He was commissioned, this is commissioned by the Saja um, Biannual, and, 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 and he also does these incredible um, kind of installations in other modern um, gardens in the city, but also uh, <coughs> museums. This is the um, rooftop commission at the Metropolitan Museum. In, in New York. The sources for the lush patterns that sprout from his spills of paint are the detailed works on paper that he, that he makes. In the style of the miniaturist who worked for the Mughal period, the Mughal period, I guess, was similar to the Renaissance here, the, the European Renaissance. This was during uh, 1526 to 1857. Within the structures of the ancient discipline, 
Qureshi continues to find remarkable room to experiment. In his exquisite miniatures, the artist pairs richly detailed landscapes with figures in modern dress, images of contemporary life in Pakistan, or portraits of himself at work. As they did in the Mughal era, miniatures remain for Qureshi a vehicle of conveying complex political references within the para parameters of their small dimensions and refined imagery. In recent years, Qureshi has transplanted his landscape from the boundaries of the page to specific architectural uh, environments. Flooding his chosen sites with acrylic, the artist then works the paint into thickets of ornamental leaves with foliate patterns that evoke the luxuriant walled gardens of the Mughals. A ubiquitous, um, I can't even pronounce the bloody word, subject in historic miniatures uh, in the roof garden. The blooms also echo the verdant foliage of Central Park, a green space conceived in the 19th century to function as a site of respite and tranquility in the midst of the chaotic and cacophonous city. This is another piece um, at the Imperial War Museum North. I'm, I'm only showing you certain artists who were part of this exhibition. There was also work by Zarina Bimji with a photograph which, which is not, not shown here. Um, okay, what, what I'll do now is um, to talk a little bit about the Colombo Art Biennial. I was, um, I was given the opportunity in 2016 to create <coughs> the fourth edition of the Colombo Art Biennial. Um, Colombo is the, the capital of, of Sri Lanka. And if you haven't been to Sri Lanka, I urge you to go. Uh, it is just one of the most amazing places. Um, and if you like surfing and, and you know, you like the sea life, then uh, it's a must. Um, but anyway, I was in, in, in Colombo uh, in, in 2016 uh, to curate the, 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 the Colombo Art Biennial. Um, the Biennial attracted 2,500 visitors in its last edition. Its main focus was community engagement and educational initiatives alongside its visual arts and architects program. Um, it was hosted uh, across 10 different famous sites around Colombo, from the Prana Lounge to Slave Island. Visitors enjoyed the rich, diverse experience of Sri Lanka, um, space and culture. So this, this idea of, of, of uh, conceiving space, I found um, that was the theme, which I found really, really interesting. And um, I, I had gone to Colombo f um, in advance of when th the exhibition happened. So I, f I found a lot of these sites and negotiated with, with you know, uh, various different individuals, including the cathedral, the Anglican cathedral. Again, there's, there's no slide of that here with, with the artist Christina Rodriguez's work. Uh, I just f found that um, it was really interesting to show work not in just the traditional spaces, but also spaces that are part of uh, specific communities or where people worship as well. And this is um, uh, a, an artist who's from Liverpool originally, who's now based in London, Shiloh Kumari Berman. She um, did this installation of her kind of photographic work um, and that was at the University Gallery. Another artist from, from the north of uh, Sri Lanka, from Jaffna, I find that since the war has, has ended, um, you can still f f find that how conflict and violence has really, really sort of um, changed the artist's in, in, in the way they work, it's very much, you know, the experience that they've had for such a long time of war, of losing family, friends, that it's actually engraved within their psyche. And you can see that uh, although this, these bicycles, you know, they were bombed and you see uh, the coconut, you know, um, um, sort of uh, fruit, they're also engraved you know, he's, he's engraved these, 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 uh, these coconuts, which, which is really um, quite, uh, quite interesting installation. And Danushka made this piece of work 
with a paddy, rice paddy. So you, you were experiencing um, how essentially rice grows in, 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 in Sri Lanka and you, you, you were encouraged to walk in and out. And the installation was there for a period of, I think, three weeks. And, uh, and, and, and um, at the end of the day, the, 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 the rice uh, dried out and, 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 and it, it, it died out. So um, it was interesting to see that whole kind of, you know, um, journey. And this is uh, the work by Pfizer si Butt, who is um, based in London, um, but originally is from Lahore. And again, we see ideas of, of conflict through this uh, image. Another artist whose work I'm really, really fond of is Mithu Sen. And again, she's from, from India. And what she was interested in doing was when she arrived, uh, in this is uh, Prana Lounge, it's a Buddhist center. So uh, downstairs you have all the different function rooms for yoga, so on and so forth. And upstairs we have this kind of derelict uh, space that we could use. And what she wanted to do was to visit different houses and to get the feel of how people lived and to borrow, you know, uh, or loan objects from the houses, but also she was interested in painting the walls in a color that, that um, the houses are painted in. So you, you see this kind of sky blue and, and the yellow, very much uh, familiar to the Colombo lifestyle. And this is an artist who <coughs> is based in, um, based in Glossop and her work is very much in the style of miniature paintings. Um, and um, and she depicts women uh, and, 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 and she has different sort of narratives and episodes um, sort of um, again on, on, on paper, but very different to the work of Imran Qureshi. That, that I talked about. I think, I think that's the end of the slideshow and um, thank you very much. <laughs>